Hi everyone, welcome back to Nature News. I'm Alice Ford, and this week we're talking policy, warming seas, droughts, air pollution, and scary animals in honor of Halloween. You might remember me talking about the Tongass National Forest in Alaska. Well, this week it lost its protection. It's one of the largest temperate rainforests in the world, but as of Thursday, it will be legal for logging companies to build roads and cut and remove timber throughout more than 9.3 million acres of forest, which features old growth stands of red and yellow cedar, Sitka spruce, and western hemlock. The relatively pristine expanse is also home to plentiful salmon runs and imposing fjords. The decision, which will be published in the Federal Register, reverses protections President Bill Clinton put in place back in 2001 and is one of the most sweeping public land rollbacks that President Trump has enacted. Now, if nature is important to you and your family, and I hope it is, then hit that subscribe button, share this video with a friend, and leave a comment on why you love nature down below. Oh, and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up too. A huge problem I see when it comes to environmental policy and practice is the skirting of responsibility and the trickle-down effect because developed nations sell or dump their waste on less developed countries. We export their resources to power our development, and now we're selling our old used cars that no longer meet emission standards. Now, how is that helping the global climate problem? Our governments need to stop thinking about the environmental issues that we have as secular, because they are anything but that. We all have to work together. We're all on this planet together. Now, more than 90% of the cars sold in places like Kenya and Nigeria are actually secondhand imports, and the majority of these vehicles don't even meet minimum standards for air pollution or safety. Now, air pollution in itself is a global pandemic, and one few countries have taken drastic measures to curb. In case you forgot, outdoor air pollution actually kills more than 3 million people per year globally, but we don't seem to be shutting down any economies for that, are we? Air pollution also kills more than half a million babies around the world every year. A new report by the Health Effects Institute actually says that, the, says that the majority of newborns who lost their lives to air pollution were in the developing world with indoor air quality to blame for two thirds of these deaths. Now this is according to the State of Global Air 2020 report, where scientists discovered that polluted air has an impact on the health of babies while they are still in the womb and this air pollution can lead to premature death or low birth weight, which are both factors associated with infant mortality. And now here are some scaredy cats and animals in honor of Halloween. Recently in Kamchatka, Russia, an enormous fish die-off has been blamed on algae blooms, which decimated bottom-dwelling marine life like urchins, octopus, and starfish. Now, the algae bloom also sickened more than a dozen people that swam in the waters that week and has been blamed on warming oceans. Scientists spotted a patch of fetid, yellowish foam hundreds of feet wide and several miles long floating down the coast. Divers later jumped in the water and estimated that in some places, 95% of bottom-dwelling organisms had perished. And several brown bears even suffered from severe food poisoning after eating them. Now, this is just one example of the potential ripple effect these massive marine die-offs can cause. And off the coast of Los Angeles, you may be surprised to find out that a huge DDT dumping ground exists right off the coast. Now, this is in 3,000 feet of water, and it's off the coast of Catalina Island, where researchers recently just found thousands of leaking barrels of DDT. Yes, I said leaking barrels of DDT, which is the once widely used pesticide that has been banned since the 1980s. Now, as many as half a million of these barrels could still be underwater right now, according to interviews in an LA Times review of historical records, manifests, and undigitized research. From 1947 to 1982, the nation's largest manufacturer of DDT, a pesticide so powerful that it poisoned birds and fish, was actually based in Los Angeles. 
And as DDT became more controversial, the company actually disposed heavily of their products, pumping it through storm drains directly into the sea, right by a lot of popular beaches. And as we now know, dumping barrels off ships directly into the ocean as well. Would you be upset if your water was shut off every night so that your community could save water? Well, that's exactly what's happening to more than a million people in Morocco who have been experiencing a nearly two year drought that has led to massive drops in their water and their aquifer. Now, a report by Morocco's Social and Environmental Council and Official Advisory Board warned that four fifths of the country's water resources could vanish over the next 25 years. And not to be too dark, but depleting aquifers that have taken thousands of years to fill is not going to end well for humans. And just sitting back waiting for rain is not exactly the best strategy. I'd love to know what you are doing to reduce water in your home. And if you need some tips on saving water, you can check out some of the other videos on my channel on the playlist Green and Fabulous, or feel free to send me a DM too. Bears, whales, and wolverines imperiled by Trump's environmental rollbacks. And that's not all. Our nation's biodiversity is under threat. Now, the Trump administration has been planning to delist some species like the sage grouse in a bid to open more federal land to oil and gas drilling and has denied endangered species protections altogether for some animals like the wolverine, which, just so you know, only has about 300 individuals in the U.S. And other species under threat from rollbacks of environmental law are the whooping crane, monarch butterflies, bees, black bears, right whales, and leatherback sea turtles, to name a few. Now, the warming climate isn't just changing the environment in the Arctic, but everywhere. And those of you that are like me that enjoy skiing or even mountaineering, we can see the warming world even more. In the Alps, the temperature has risen on average 3.6 degrees which has shrunk glaciers and made climbing the scraggy peaks even more dangerous. Areas which were usually covered in ice or permafrost have begun to melt. This is causing the mountainsides and the walls of rocks to contract and expand, which has caused more than 100 deaths over the last 30 years. Travel is such a burden on the environment, from emissions from transportation to waste, resource degradation, and habitat destruction. Travel is just hard on the planet. But our transportation could be getting a boost with Airbus just announcing that the first zero emissions hydrogen powered commercial planes could be available by 2030. And they're pretty futuristic looking too. I'm excited for these. I'd love to know in the comments also what you're doing to reduce your environmental impact. And if you have questions on what you could be doing, let me know in the comments. I've got one last thing to get you through the weekend. Last weekend, I actually watched a documentary called Kiss the Ground on Netflix, which highlights the importance of soil and how the regeneration of soil could have a bigger effect on reducing climate change than the removal of cars from the roadways. Now, our soil is a monstrous carbon capture machine, but our farm systems have never really been set up to keep the carbon in the ground with yearly tilling and constant planting. What we need are cover crops at industrial farms. We also need more wild areas in urban and rural areas. We need community gardens, green roofs, and less pavement to fight the warming temperatures and rising emissions. And we need places like the Tongass National Forest to stay intact. Now, if you haven't watched this movie, check it out this week and come chat with me live next Sunday at 5 p.m. Eastern time for a live chat on YouTube, Twitch, and Instagram. Don't forget to connect with me on all my social media platforms too so we can continue the conversation. As always, thank you so much for joining me here on Nature News. And don't forget to subscribe, share this video with a friend, hit that like button, and I will see you next week.